so as uh, <coughs> as we already discussed in our first session about uh, the course and uh, what are the things we are going to cover and uh, what is the mode of the delivery so now from today onward actual things will start so here i just uh, i have only one request because uh, as i know you all are from the non development background and as i already told you this course uh, we are going to start from scratch we are going to start from zero so as you know like uh, when we are going to start something from the beginning so we have to put a lot of effort so to understand any language to explore any language there are two things is very very important one is practice second one is the patience you have to do practice with patience then only you can learn any language because i know when you will write you know, the code after some time or after two session or three session when you will start writing some small small code so maybe you will get many errors maybe you will get many errors so you should not be panic so that is the time where you have to take patience and for the practice point of view every day or in all those days where we have the session everyone has to spend at least one hour okay after a two three session when we will start uh, write uh, command start write coding so everyone has to do practice for at least one hour that's all nothing more than that so are we ready to do practice yes good okay so <clears throat> this uh, entire course is basically as the name you guys already know customization of rbi desktop using python and rpy so before going to start customization using python and rpy first of all everyone has to understand what is the meaning of rpy or what is the meaning of python even before rpy everyone has to understand about python so can anyone tell me what is the, what is python whatever you know feel free to ask okay whatever you know like uh, someone can tell me as i heard about python this is a language this is a something this is an application this is software so what is python this is open source software okay no no any license for this one so we can download from uh, net we can work okay. on it and we can use okay any other which is the work it program where we monitor of i think c we don't have we should not have any knowledge on c anything also we can write on python directly we can do programming in python for other other languages c is the basic c plus everything like dot net these things must be important okay means basically 
uh, what you are saying ki if we want to learn c++ or c sharp or java so all these language is basically platform is the c so if you know the c then only you can learn c++ or uh, c sharp correct it will be easy correct 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 mm -hmm. it will be easy you are right so like uh, c sharp dot net uh, this is the advanced language so mm -hmm. basically even if you don't know about the c c++ so if you will just spend uh, as i told you if you will just spend one hour a day with patience so definitely you can learn c sharp dot net as well because as you know for the customization of the rgi desktop we can or some people are using dot net c sharp dot net and some people are using python so both the languages have their own pros and cons but because our session is totally inclined towards the python so first everyone has to understand about what is the python so if uh, simply if you will try to search in google what is python if you will simply write on the google what is python so maybe most of the places you will get uh, this definition python is interpreted high level and general purpose programming language python is an interpreted high level and general purpose programming language so here first of all we have to understand what are the words we are using in definition and what is the meaning of all these words that is very important means if you simply if you understand the complete meaning of this sentence so at least 10% or 15% understanding about the language i am not talking about uh, complete understanding but at least 10% understanding you will get like uh, before someone was asking python is a open source uh, software or application but after understanding of uh, these thing <clears throat> you will be clear about uh, exactly what is the python what is the programming language what is the general purpose what is uh, high level low level interpreted all this so the main keywords what you are able to see here this is the interpreted high level general purpose and program language so first we have to understand what is the meaning of uh, interpreted high level general purpose in programming language if at any moment uh, you have any doubt you have any question so you can ask me so now here so first we are going to understand about the, what is the programming language what is the programming language and even before going to understand about uh, the programming language first we have to understand what is the meaning of the language what is the meaning of the language can anyone tell me what is the meaning of the language why we are using language it is a part of communication it is a part of communication very good <clears throat> anyone else Oh, that is absolutely right. The language means what? 
if you want to express your ideas if you want to communicate with someone so definitely you required one language without language this is very very tough to express your thoughts or to communicate with someone so now one thing is clear in language means way of or the medium of communication if we want to communicate so it means language is compulsory now after that uh, we are coming to the programming language what is the meaning of program so anyone have any idea about uh, what is the programming language i don't want uh, the definition you can you can tell whatever you want what is the programming language what uh, what you are thinking we have to communicate with the system system it will not understand tamil or telugu so their own language we have to communicate with the machine that is programming language that so basically here the most important thing is <clears throat> as you know any system either your laptop or machine or any any machine any machine that is that maybe maybe this is the lift maybe your ac maybe o1 maybe computer maybe laptop mobile any any device as you know your laptop or your computer definitely these devices will not understand hindi english or telugu all these devices will understand only one language all these devices are understanding only one language what is this language can anyone tell me what is the name of this language this is python language no no this is, no no this is binary codes <laughs> correct so any computer any laptop any machine will understand only binary language only binary means binary means only two numbers are there anything if uh, you want to tell to computer that will be the combination of 0101010 or b so computer will understand only binary language that is the next important thing what you have to remember and one thing i just want to tell you like maybe some people who already attended the first session so what we are discussing please listen carefully understand carefully because after this session we have a small quiz okay after this session we have a small quiz for five questions so if you will actively participate in the quiz then this will be appreciated so now here coming to the point so computer will understand only 010101 it means it will understand only what only the binary language so now the thing is the language which is understand by computer the computer or machine the language which is understand by computer this is called programming language there are n number of languages are there in market means you guys or even me also we knows only few languages but 
in this world there are thousand of languages out there thousand thousand of programming languages out there in us or in other countries many universities are working with uh, they are doing research on the language only some of the languages uh, will get famous so we knows about that language some of the languages are not famous so we don't know about that languages so there are thousands of languages are there so if someone will tell me i know all the languages all the programming languages that is 110% not possible so any language which is understand by a computer is called the programming language now after that how many type of programming languages we have from when the computer or programming is started from that time to till now what are the programming languages we have used all these programming languages are divided in three categories low level mid level and high level low level language middle level language and high level language low level language is called the first generation language middle level language is called the second generation language and high level language is called the third generation language so you have total three category low level middle level high level or first generation second generation and third generation so the first generation language first generation language is basically this language scientist or people have used in very very initial stage means when the computer invented language is invented that time they are using only 010101 they are using only 010101 that language is called the machine language or machine level language if you want to write a program to add two number subtract two number all these program these people have written using only 010101 and that language is called the machine language or machine level language and that era that era or that duration and that time when people have used these languages so these language is called the low level language or first generation language after that what happened when people were using the 0101 and if they want to write a program for adding two number that program itself if they want to write so they have to return at least 50 60 line of code they have to write 50 60 line of code to only add two numbers because this is very very complicated language 010101 normal people cannot understand easily so what happened after that as you know time to time in all the languages some improvement is happening so now what happened after the machine language some scientist have introduced some small small words they were telling ki bhai instead of complete 010101 now we have invented one language where you can use some small small words like for multiplication you can use mul for division you can use div for addition you can use a double d so it will basically reduce your effort 
so that language where we were using small small words that is basically technically this is called mnemonics so when along with the 010101 when we are using these mnemonics so that language is called the assembly language or assembly level language mean machine language is pure 010101 after that the next generation came second generation or middle level language there we have the assembly language assembly language means the combination of 010101 and some mnemonics then over the time more improvement uh, happened on the current language after that people have introduced many languages c c++ all these things so in these languages you no need to write 010101 you can use normal english you can use normal english but it is not like you can use anything whatever you want there is a proper format is there proper syntax is there that you have to follow and you can write the program and that program you can run so this type of languages where you can simply use english language that is called the high level language or third generation language so whatever the language we heard till now c c++ python java c sharp these all language comes under the third generation language or high level language. so we have total three type of languages three categories first generation second generation third generation machine language first generation assembly language second generation and high level language java python all these things are of the third generation yes to everyone now after that now after that coming to the next part of the story now as you know if you are going to meet to someone that guy knows japanese okay you you are going to meet someone that guy knows japanese you don't know japanese that guy don't know about the english so normally how people are uh, means uh, dealing this kind of situation okay i will take another example i will take another example you will take example of uh, any let's say prime minister modi as you know every time he is going outside india he is visiting japan china us uk every year what you are understanding means uh, he knows all the languages how he is uh, communicate communicating with uh, other delegates or other uh, countries uh, higher authorities yes madam tell me actually i think we are not getting your voice if you rejoin so maybe your voice will come yes can anyone tell me how how this ministers are dealing this thing
Hello? Am I audible? Obviously, only English. That is common. No, but uh, but they don't know. They, like if you if you go to China, okay. Let's suppose if you go to China or if you go to Japan, so there these people are very 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 particular or the language. They don't body know language. English. They don't know English. Body language. No. So so the language of interpreter. Interpreter. Correct. Correct. Every. Means when Modi ji will go somewhere, so definitely one translator or one interpreter will always go with minister because minister don't know about other languages, correct? Even let's suppose Modi ji, he don't know about English also, but he is visiting all the places because. He has interpreter. He has translator. That translator duty is what? That translator is translating. Let's suppose uh, he is going to Japan. So that translator knows Japanese, knows English, knows Hindi. So he can translate. Uh, means he can. He is the mediator between both the parties. So whatever the other party will tell in the Japanese, he will quickly translate and tell to minister. So the context of this thing is why I am giving you this example. As we already know, computer understand only zero one zero one zero. Computer understand only and only machine level language or machine language that we already know. And after that, we are talking. In now the era where we are doing to do something, this is the era of high level language. You are going to use C, C plus plus, C sharp, Java, Python, all these languages. And these languages are basically, as you know, normal English. So ultimately, if we are going to write uh, our, our program in English, how our computer will understand? Same thing, exactly same what we have discussed in example. You are writing a program in Java. I am writing program in C sharp. Other one is writing program in Python. Someone is writing program in C. But ultimately, all the program is going to run where? All the program is going to run in our computer. Only. And our computer will understand only machine language. So ultimately, all the languages what you are going to use, you required what? You required one? Machine language. Which language? Machine language. No, you actually a programming you, language, right? No, you you are going to use one programming language, correct? Yeah. You are going to write a program in C sharp or Java or Python, but your computer will understand only machine language. And as you already given my answer, when minister will go outside. He knows Hindi, other party knows Japanese. So what he required, how he communicated, he required interpreter, correct? Yeah. Yes. Same thing, same thing here also. If you are going to use any language, so definitely you required what? You required one interpreter or you required one translator. That translator will translate your language. That translator will translate your language. What you have, what you have written in machine level language so that computer can easily understand your code or your program. So here you can see like uh, if uh, I will write something. 
so it will go to the translator and translator will convert this thing to 010101 or machine language code then after computer will understand and the thing which is required to convert any programming language any high level high level programming language to machine level or machine level also called the low level language okay just for your this knowledge machine level language or low level language both are the same thing so the thing what you require to convert your high level language to low level language that is called what that is called the translator clear anyone anyone have any question any doubt till this point No, all good. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, as I already explained you, what is translator? So, as you guys already, this context you already know, interpreter Hi. and all this. Yes, tell me. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Now we okay, can. Okay. Hear. Okay, sorry. Actually, uh, previous to previous slide, I had a uh, question. Tell me. I could not connect, so I could not ask you. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you give me some example on assembly language? Uh, like uh, what kind of uh, programming language like Java Python is used in high level language? Right. Uh, so uh, what kind of uh, script or language is used for middle level or assembly language? Actually, as I already explained you, the first generation language is called the miss first generation means your computer development just started. Okay. So yes. they are what the language they are using, that language name is machine language. Okay. After that, when they improvise that language, when they improvise that language means along with the machine language they introduce some mnemonics so that language itself is called the assembly language okay that language itself called what assembly language means now like like now these days we have thousands of languages or hundred of languages in the second generation in the second generation or in the first generation, we don't have that many languages. In first generation, only one language, machine language. In second generation, only one language, that is assembly language. Okay. Now, once you come to the third generation, then you got hundred of languages. But till the second generation, we have, let's suppose someone will ask you how many languages we have in the second generation. So in second generation or till second generation, you have only two language, machine language, lang level language or and assembly language. In first generation, we have only one language. In third generation, we have hundred of languages. Okay. 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 Thank even, you. Even today also. Today also, if you want to write a code in machine level, you can write. If you want to write a code in assembly language, you can write. You have so many options, but the problem is these languages are too much complicated. Too much complicated. So because of that reason, people are not using machine language and assembly language anywhere. Everyone is trying to use high level language only okay yes okay. okay so what is translator that we have understood translator will convert our source code to machine code whatever the source code or two three definitions are there like uh, translator will convert the source code to machine code translator will convert high level language to low level language code Translator will convert your uh, third generation language to first generation language. There are many different definitions of this. 
once if you know the concept then you can you can create your own definition now after that uh, here how many type of translator we have so we have total three type of translator assembler compiler and interpreter okay we have how many type of uh, translator we have assembler we have compiler and we have interpreter what is the definition and what is the use of this in first generation in first generation what language we were using in first generation can anyone tell me binary 01 yeah Zero. so so do you require translator in first generation no no not required na no? because we are writing code in 0101 and machine also understanding 0101 so ultimately we don't require any translator in first generation now when we will come to the second generation in second generation we are going to use assembly language so the translator the translator the translate assembly language to machine language the translator which translate assembly language to machine language or binary language that is called the assembler the translator which converts your assembly language program to machine language 010101 or binary language that translator is called the assembler now after that coming to the compiler and interpreter normally these two translator these two type of translator you will get in the high level language these two type of translator you will get in the high level language compiler and interpreter what is the difference between compiler and interpreter as you know the work of translator is what the work of translator is convert your high level language to low level language now here two type of technologies are there means people are translating in two ways I means basically this is not up to us this is basically connected with the language which language is using compiler which language is using interpreter that is already predefined you no need to worry about this like uh, if you will uh, if you are going to use the c or c++ so these all languages are basically what compiler based language these all languages are using compiler like javascript javascript they are using interpreter so now what is the difference or what is the meaning of the compiler and interpreter this is very easy i want to tell something in japanese i want to tell something in japanese i have written my statement okay i have written my statement you are my translator so you can translate my statement in two different ways one is what one is you will translate line by line you will translate line by line and second way is you will read my all the statement you will read my all the statement and after that 
you will translate my statement in single go one go on understood the difference between these two translation yes sir one translation is you are going to translate line by line and another translation is first you will read the complete things complete statement and after that you will translate all the statement in one shot so the first way where program or some some component is uh, translating line by line that is called interpreter if any language have translator which is translating line by line then that translator is called the interpreter and if any language have translator which will translate the entire thing in one shot then that is called the compiler understood everyone the difference between assembler compiler and interpreter yes yes oh. so now we are coming so this is the just the pictorial representation what i explained you what is assembler assembler is basically converting assembly language to machine language what is compiler compiler is basically converting high level language to machine language so there are two type of translator we have one is compiler other one is interpreter and i already explained you what is the difference between compiler and interpreter now here <clears throat> i want to show you what how this compiled languages like uh, we have two different uh, now we are basically going to discuss about only high level language so as i already told you there are two different mechanism compiled and compiler and interpreter so if any language is using compiler type of translator then that language is called a compiled language if any language is using interpreter type of translator then it is called an interpreted language but before going to discuss about this i just want to ask one simple question what is the meaning of uh, executable anyone can anyone tell me or or okay forget about executable we will make more easy this thing what is the what is the exe file can anyone tell me that uh, definitely you guys knows about exe file actually what we are doing with the exe file actually how how we are uh, basically using this thing or uh, anyone knows about exe file yeah run the software in the computer we use exe exactly file. means exe file means if let's suppose if you are using windows if you are using windows operating system so any program any program is microsoft word notepad arcgis any program any program whatever the program you are running in your computer every program we are running using exe only correct we every program what you are running like here if i show you let's suppose if you see here any program if i will let's suppose if i will go to the notepad simple if i will go to the notepad here you can see you are getting this notepad if i right click on this one and if i will go to the open file location so here you will get what here you will get the notepad but this is what is the shortcut if i right click on this one and uh, if i will check the property so here you can see what is the what is the file 
here we have notepad dot ax correct similarly if you go to any program i am not talking about one program to program it is whatever you want if you will simply if you will write in a word also if you will simply write here word also and if you right click and go to the final location of this word so you will get what you will get one dot exe file like if i will if i will click on let's suppose arc map if i will go to the arc map right click open file location so here this is what this is the shortcut if i right click on this one and then after if i go to the property so here you can see always you will get what always you will get one executable file exe file means this is the executable file so this file you can just click on exe file and it will run this is the meaning of exe file exe file file means executable file any file which is dot exe if you simply double click on this file it will run in windows machine for uh, apple file extension is different but in window file extension is exe file so ultimately when you are creating any program when you are writing any program that program is basically end product because when you are writing the program definitely you are not going to going to deliver me the code you are not going to deliver me what what you have written you ultimately you are going to deliver me one file the yogesh this is the file that you can run in your machine and you can get the output so ultimately for any programming language if we are using any programming language the end product of any programming language is either exe file or dll file end product of any programming language is either exe file that is called the executable file or dll that is called the class library some people who are coming from the autocad background they all they knows about this one how we are using the dll file so like in autocad we have one command the net load when you will hit the net load after that you have to select one dll file and that dll file you can run in the autocad so any programming language what you are going to use and product will be either executable file or dll file similarly in python also when we will develop anything either you will get what either you will get one executable file or you will get what or you will get the dll file or class library so this thing we are going to discuss in detail how basically we are getting this executable file or class library file in python so that i will explain you in the next session understood everyone yes yes sir. okay now after that uh, please do one thing everyone please uh,